Truly, the internet is a very fascinating place. Do you want to know how to climb the Mount Everest? Google it. Do you want to know how to fight a bear and win? Google it. Or even more difficult, do you want to know how to get a girlfriend? Google it. When people want to learn a new skill nowadays, most people look it up on the internet. But let me tell you a secret. Before the internet existed, there was a thing called books. It's a very silly concept, but it's, it's words printed on, on a dead tree. Yeah, I know. Who came up with this stuff? I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> sometimes I like to help myself to some books just because I like having something in my hands that I can hold. That is not a website. And something you can take on vacation or somewhere where there is not Wi-Fi. Although I can't imagine being without Wi-Fi. You get the point. And today we are going to take a look at a guide to the breeding of tropical silk moths. Which is a guide that talks about how to breed the Saturnidae, the silk moth species of the world. Now, that's basically what I am about and what my channel is mainly about. Although I breed other moths, not only silt moths, I breed other moths. But still, I think it would be a suitable book to review. Let's get started. Ooh, my hair is terrible. And what am I wearing? Hey you there, are you interested in learning to breed silk moths like me? Well, although websites and YouTube channels like mine exist nowadays and a lot of people find information on the internet, there's also books available for the beginner. And this is a nice book if you want to get started, A Guide to the Breeding of Tropical Silk Moths. It's also by Langl here in German, Die Sucht von Tropischen Wilden Seidenspinnen. I'm not German, so that probably sound terrible. But let's take a look at the contents. And immediately when we open the book, we can see it is, uh, it starts at the fundamentals. Here we can see the fundamentals of breeding. And it helps people get started on how to breed silk moths. Use a petri dish for to hatch the eggs, for example, or collect the female in a bag to make her lay eggs, how to ship the eggs in a letter. So basically, if you want to start breeding moths, this is very useful information, especially if you have no other point of reference. You see, breeding silk moths is a pretty specific hobby. <clears throat> There's not a lot of people in the world who do this for fun and are as crazy as I am. And we also see it has some nice colorful images of some spectacular species. Um, all of these are species I haven't bred yet. They are also still missing from my channel. I'm an experienced breeder, but some of these are for me still too difficult to breed. And how to sex pupa. So we're just going to get through the contents really fast because we don't have to film every page. Here a nice uh, guide on how to hand pair moths in captivity with the correct mating position. Now here we go to the some of the taxonomical. By the way all of this is uh, taxonomical names with the food plants for example. Here we are at Automeris, here Automeris Zephyr are food plants, Cerces, Cerocarpus, Malus, Padus, Piracanta. Here you see basically a list of almost all the silt moths. 
and it includes many of their food plants. See, this is a useful reference. Chameleoides, Hemileuca, everything is in here. So this is a good. Uh, if you if you are totally new to this, this part is going to help you if you ever find a white wild silk moth and you need to know what the food plants of these species are. One thing to notice about this book is it's bilingual. That means it's written in two languages. Um, half of the text is German and half of the text is English. So if you are German, sprechen Sie Deutsch, then um, I can also recommend this book. Because I imagine it's harder to find information in a language like German than it is in English. That being said, I do think this book um, talks about the very basics and if you are already an experienced breeder, if you have bred silk moss before in your life, then you probably don't need this book. Um, it, it is a nice book, it contains nice information to get people started. If you are a complete beginner, I will recommend you this book, but if you have, if you have been breeding silk moss before in your life, Hmm, then I think, I think it's better for you to look uh, for a more advanced guide. And that's it basically. Um, half of the book here is basically the names of 2000 species of silk moss, including their food plants. So, let's see, this is about uh, how to breed. So, if we, if we take this part of the book, this amount of pages, this is basically the breeding guide, what we have in here. And, and all of this, what is left here, is basically the, the taxonomical index, showing the names and food plants. So, I do have to say, um, the part of this book, that is the breeding guide, is actually a small part of the book, and the most of the content... It's just a food plant list. Is that a bad thing? No, I don't think this is a bad thing. But um, I wouldn't expect, this is like just, it has all the basics that a beginner needs, but uh, I don't think there there's information beyond that. So that's why this review is uh, going to be short. Do I recommend the book? I would say yes, I recommend it. But only if you are truly a, a beginner in entomology and to just, and you want to get started, um, you want to get started, you also want to breed, maybe you have Luna moths or Rothschildia moths wherever you live, and you know where to find them in the wild, and you want to breed them as pets, well, then this is a good point of reference. So, this is the book review for today. Thank you for watching. See you soon. I don't expect this series to get millions of views because it's such a peculiar thing. But that's the great thing about it. It's easy to find reviews of popular books, but I'm one of the few people who showcase things like this. Now if you like this concept, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Because for some reason, YouTube has decided to demonetize my channel. So I am dependent on crowdfunding for 100% in order to support this channel and upgrade the production quality. If I got 1 million subscribers tomorrow, it wouldn't make a difference for me. What counts is the people that support me. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next episode.